Hi, and welcome to another video in Parametric Camp, this channel where we do computational design tutorials and exercises. My name is Jose Luis, and what I would like to show you today is a multi-part video where we're going to do an exercise where we're going to parse a CSV data file, a comma-separated values file, that contains geometric information that has been recorded from the motion of a video game controller in three-dimensional space. So what I'm going to show you is how to take that data that was recorded on a, with, from my students in my computational design class. And let me show you a little bit of what that looked like. They had these video game controllers and they were moving in three-dimensional space. And we were recording all the parameters of that motion as a CSV file. And this data set is open and is, you can access it on the, on the main GitHub repository of the class. And it looks something like this. It's just lists and columns of the XYZ coordinates of the center of the controller, the, ma the main axis of the controller, and some information related to um, whether if the user was pressing the buttons or not. What I'm going to focus on on this video is to teach you how to take that information and then how to parse it manually with vanilla C sharp scripting. Uh, I'm going to teach you the C sharp way of taking a CSV file and parsing each one of the lines and chopping it by the commas and then retrieving that information and converting it into lists of usable data. I'm going to teach it the, C the pure C sharp way. And I'm going to also teach you uh, a little bit of a more clean and elegant way of taking that data. And instead of taking it as lists of Boolean values or double values or text, how to encapsulate that into objects that represent that information. For that, I'm going to be using a simpler data set, an example data set of, for example, student grades. So uh, a data set that contains uh, student names, their social security number, the grades that they took for various exams, and then the final grade. And I'm going to represent those as a student object that I'm going to create a custom class that I'm going to be doing to encapsulate all that information. Uh, I will explain the benefits of how this works because it's really good, for example, when you exchange data for databases or when you want to represent this data in other frameworks. And last but not least, I will teach you how now, after doing it in a, with a basic example with student grades, I'm going to show you how to implement that in a 3D modeling environment. I'm going to be using Rhino and Grasshopper because Grasshopper allows me to script with C sharp, and then I'm going to be showing you how to take all that, all that vanilla C sharp knowledge, bring it into Grasshopper, and then use that to visualize in three dimensional space the motion of those controllers. So that you can do, for example, so that you can visualize how each one of the controllers, how the user that was moving them here, like like with this, there are two hands one next to the other, and then how this could be really useful, for example, to start plotting ways of, to start visualizing ways of this motion, such as, for example, I just did a really quick exercise here. I joined the centers of those planes uh, in three-dimensional space, and it creates this really nice ribbon-like kind of structure, okay? Uh, so in this multi-part video, I'm going to be focusing on the technique of parsing the CSV data and plotting it into something that can be visualized in that some in to plot of, of retrieving it with vanilla C sharp and then plotting it in a 3D modeling environment. And then in a future video that I will record as a sequel to this exercise, I will be doing an algorithmic modeling challenge uh, where I will now with the parsed data, I will try to figure out interesting ways of visualizing this motion in three dimensional space. Okay. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, uh, just stay tuned and continue watching this series of videos. And uh, as usual, if you like this content, please, please remember to subscribe, notifications, like this video, and all those things that um, are the YouTube etiquette these days. <laughs> okay, see you on the next video. Let's get hands on.